praise the Lord and uh, a good evening to all of us. Uh, before we begin, I would like to continue from where my brother had stopped with a word of prayer. Father, we continue to say thank you for this evening and for each one that is logged on. Father, we give you praise. As we go to listen to your word, Abba Father, it's my prayer that you will take charge. Father, empty me of myself and fill me with your word, Lord. And Father, let the words that proceed forth from my mouth be your words. Delete every word that belongs to me and replace it with your word, Lord. And let your word come to us in power and in mighty, and that we shall receive this word for the edification of our souls. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, my brother Asimwe, for leading us. And uh, I must confess that you did your level best to preempt my sermon, but I believe it was spirit-led, and I will pick it up from there. The theme for this month has been, My House Shall Be a House of Prayer. And our topic today is, The Lord, the Rewarder of Those Who Seek Him. And we pick this up from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, which my brother uh, read to us very well. I, I want to thank uh, the Lord so much for this topic and a choice of words that was used. The topic is the Lord, the Lord, the rewarder of those that seek him. When a statement begins with the word the, it means the statement is sure, the statement is definite of what it's referring to. And so the word the is used to refer to something specific or well-known, or something that is not to be debated upon or debated on. It qualifies a statement to be conclusive. And so when we say the Lord, we are referring to God Almighty. And when we say the reward, that we are referring to God as the rewarder and no other person. And so the, the, the heading also goes a further to explain to us that God rewards those that seek him. He rewards all those that seek him. But there is a question that I want to pose before I get into the sermon. Will all those that seek him be rewarded? Will all those that seek him be rewarded? Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And so it's not a must that everyone who appears to be seen seeking the Lord will be rewarded by him. But our text today is going to help us to examine the kind of people that the Lord rewards. That's why when we go to churches on Sundays, altar calls are made, and we have all gone to worship God, but an altar call is made and when you surrender your life to Christ Jesus, it puts you at another level of worship where you're put in a position to enjoy the rewards that he has in place for those that seek him. And so our text, Hebrews eleven six, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. I'm using the New King James Version. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. 
We all know that when you are seeking a reward from someone, we must please them. Our parents did this to us, and sometimes we also do the same to our children, that when they please you, sometimes there are certain rewards such as outings that you offer unto them. And so it's the same thing in the kingdom of God, that when you please God, he rewards you. And he's telling us that without faith, we cannot please him. And so we are going to uh, look at three subtopics as we address our topic this evening. Number one, qualifications for the reward. Number two, how he rewards. How does he reward his people? And then number three, the rewards themselves. We'll look at the rewards. And so number one, the qualifications for the rewards. Number one, it is uh, we are only going to focus on verse six, and I will not go far from that. So, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so number one, one of the qualifications according to our topic and our text is faith. And, and in his introductory remarks, my brother Adson brought this out very well, the purpose of faith in pleasing God. I tried to look out for the meaning of faith in the dictionary, but it seemed cheap, and the dictionary simply explains it as trust or confidence in someone or something. But spiritually and biblically, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things that are unseen. In fact, the New King James Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. I'm sure if we have a lawyer on the platform, this is so much contradictory with, 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 with what you have studied. Evidence must be tangible. You cannot go to court and say there was a gun when you have not brought it in court. That is hearsay. It will not be taken in as evidence. Whatever you speak about in court, you must have evidence of that thing or bring a witness who was there to bear witness, but that witness must also come with the evidence of what happened. But spiritually, in faith, in faith, there is evidence of things that are not seen. For instance, we know that we are going to heaven when we are saved, but none of us has been there. But we have the evidence in the word of God that there is a heaven where those that have washed their clothes in the blood of the Lamb will go. So these are the kinds of people that the Lord rewards, those that have faith. And so faith is one of the qualifications for us to receive a reward from the Lord. Hebrews 11.3 gives us an example of faith. By faith, we understand that the worlds were formed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. The things that are seen, we are not made of things that are visible. Today, if you want to build a house, there are so many visible things that you use. Among them are bricks, cement, you need to have labor, you need to have uh, uh, iron bars. There are so many visible and tangible things that you must have in order to construct a house. But in faith, we simply believe. We believe that the world was formed at the word of God. He said, let there be water, and it was. Let there be light, and it was. And so that is faith. We do not question what God has created. We do not ask questions beyond what the word of God explains to us. And those, the, such are the people that the Lord rewards. We all know about the monkey theory, that, that, that people originated from, 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 from a monkey. I don't know what will become of the monkeys that we have today. I don't know what 
will originate out of them or what will originate out of us if they if we are termed as super monkeys basing on that belief that we originated from monkeys there is that belief but in faith we believe what the word of the lord says that we were created it was his word that formed the man and he put breath in us and we began to live such are the people that receive a reward from the lord hebrews 11:17 my brother brought it out very clear that this book explains and talks about the heroes of faith. By faith, Abraham, when tested, offered up Isaac. He offered up his only son. Isaac was not just an ordinary child. Isaac was a child of the promise. It was from Isaac that the seed of Abraham had to multiply. God had told Abraham that he would multiply his seed and it will be numerous like the sand of the sea, like the stars of the skies. But now here is this very God telling you to sacrifice this son from whom your seed is to be multiplied. Now it takes faith to do what Abraham did. We all know what he did up to the end. He did not question God. Such are the people that received the reward of the Lord. And so we see the reward of Abraham being great. Indeed, he was multiplied. His descendants became numerous like the stars in the sky. Why? Because of faith. I do not know about us tonight, us that on this platform. I do not know how our faith is in our Lord. But we can self-examine and know where our faith is in the Lord. Our text further tells us, uh, without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe. Another qualification for the reward from the Lord according to our text is to believe. Now, there is a difference between faith and belief. Faith and believing in something. You see, with faith, there is a conviction about something, even though unseen. But to believe, you just accept that something is true. You take it for what it is and accept. Faith sometimes comes with the promises. But believing may not come with a promise, but you take it for what it is. Just as we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, there is no promise to that. We believe that because it is the written word. We believe that he was raised from the dead. We believe he will come again. We believe he owns the silver and the gold. We believe the cut on a thousand hills are his. We also believe that he is the rewarder. In other words, we should have no doubt in his promises. We have to believe such are the people that the Lord rewards. Finally, according to our text, he rewards those who seek him diligently. He rewards those who seek him diligently. To seek him diligently means to invest our all in all, our strength, our energy, our might, and our everything, to invest it in yearning on a daily basis to know him, seeking him diligently, seeking him with all our hearts, seeking him because we know that there is no other God except him. So such according to our text are the people that he rewards. I know many of us expect to be rewarded by the Lord, but sometimes we end up being rewarded by the world and not by God. And so anything that we attain outside the will of God, anything we attain outside, out of, outside faith in the Lord, anything we attain without believing in him, anything we attain without seeking him diligently, is not a reward from God. It is a reward 
from the world. It's what the world gives. Sometimes we are so quick to reward ourselves. We are so quick to appreciate ourselves and we feel God is not seeing our effort. We feel we are, we, we, we've done, we've invested in a lot and God is not responding. Friends, now this leads me to our next question. We have answered the qualifications for the reward. We are now looking at how he rewards. You could be thinking you have done a lot and you deserve a reward. You're looking at what other people have and you feel you should also have the same because you have served this God for long, you have served this God long enough. But how does he reward? Philippians 4:19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Friends, God rewards us according to his riches in glory, not according to our riches, not according to what we expect to get, not according to how much we feel we have invested in him. God does not lose. If you feel you have invested a lot, there are people that have invested beyond you have invested in him. And so he rewards us according to his riches in glory. Friends, each one of us has been apportioned a level of wealth that we are supposed to attain in this world. And no matter how hard we work, no matter what we do, we shall never surpass the level that has been apportioned for us. And he apportions to us according to how much we can handle. Some of us are simply still saved because the Lord has not apportioned to us a lot of wealth. Otherwise, we would not be on this platform. Some of us are still saved because the Lord has not given us a V8. Otherwise, we would be so impossible. Some of us, the Lord has apportioned us the car we have because according to his riches in glory, that is what we can handle. There are people who drive cars, you find, and literally you scratch it, you even look for a scratch, you cannot find it, but the person is so bitter with his car, you have scratched his car, he calls his mechanics, before you know it, the bill is one million shillings. You're going to buy a whole bump and spread the whole car even after putting there an invisible scratch. Now, if the Lord rewarded such a person with a V8, the rest of us will not be human beings. And so the Lord has given us what is enough for us. He knows our hearts. He rewards us according to our hearts. He told us he has gone in heaven to prepare for us a place. There are so many rooms in his father's mansion. And so he allocates us that which has been apportioned for each one of us. And so sometimes we might ask for things that we shall even never get. And so I would like to urge us to be satisfied with what we have. That is what has been apportioned for us. And beyond that, we will seek and seek and seek and seek the Lord, but he will not provide beyond what, he has, what has been allocated for us. And this has got nothing to do with our individuality, but it has everything to do with God's grace. Dr. John Senyon usually defines for us grace as the unmerited favor, the undeserving or the unmerited favor that God gives us. Friends, before we yearn for so many things, let's ask ourselves where we come from and how much we deserve. Some of us come from so far that staying in Kampala alone make, gives you satisfaction not to ask for things beyond staying in Kampala because it was never part of your plan. Some of us, God has blessed us with things that we never expected to have. But the more we get, the more we forget where the Lord got us from. I love Esther so much. Esther never forgot that he was an orphan girl. He never forgot that she never forgot that she was a Jew. She never forgot where the Lord had picked her from. She never forgot her uncle. And she said, maybe this is the purpose for why I became a queen. I did not become a queen to enjoy the luxuries of the kingdom, 
but to rescue my people. And so God has given us what we have for his glory, and we must use it for his glory. Because whatever we have is not because we are supposed to have it, but because the Lord has supplied and because of his grace, and he has supplied according to the riches in glory. And so friends, let us continue to fix our eyes on the reward and not on the rewards. Finally, let us look at the rewards. We have tangible stroke earthly rewards, but we also have heavenly stroke eternal rewards. Friends, in the Bible, we read about men like Boaz, men like Job, King Solomon, King David, who were immensely rewarded with the wealth and riches by God. And so even while we are still on earth, God blesses us with these, uh, with, with, with riches. The Bible reminds us that we are sojourners and pilgrims in this world. And friends, anyone on a journey, any pilgrim has a destination where they are going. And while you are on a journey, you do not need a lot of supplies that are going to wear you out. You need a few basics that are going to take you through the journey. And so friends, we are visitors in this world. We are sojourners, we are pilgrims in this world. And the provisions that the Lord has supplied us with are those that are going to sustain us in our journey of faith. Because there is a final destination that we are all headed for as believers. But there are those that have been rewarded and are still craving for more. Why? Because their citizenship is on earth, contrary to us whose citizenship is in heaven. And so the greatest reward that I want us to focus on tonight are not the things we have, the cars we have, the children we have, but the reward of eternal life. Friends, there is no way we read in the Bible that there is a celebration in heaven when one lame man walks, when a paralyzed man becomes well, when a blind ear hears, when a, bl when a deaf ear hears, when a blind eye sees. There is only one part in it, one, one, one portion that we read that brings celebrations in heaven, and that is when one soul, just one, comes to the Lord. And that is the greatest reward. And so let's shift our minds from miracles and earthly rewards. Friends, the greatest prophet that has ever lived on earth, as Jesus says that those of born of woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist, and there is no recorded miracle that John the Baptist performed. But he was the greatest. In fact, the man died a miserable death. His head was cut off. But Jesus says he was the greatest of all those born of women. Let us have a kingdom mind. Let us focus for that eternal word. The Bible talks about two men, a rich man and Lazarus. But what surprises or shocks me is that they both died at some point. One had enjoyed his rewards while still on earth. He was rich, and Lazarus ate what fell off his table, but they both died. But what happens after death? Now one goes to get his reward. He's seen in the bosom of Abraham on the other side, but on the other side, is the rich man dying in hellfire. Friends, the greatest reward is that final reward that we shall receive on that day. After all have failed and crumbled and fallen and our Jesus stands strong, and on that day, he will reward us. He will reward us on that day. And so I want to invite us to focus on that gift. The Lord as a rewarder of those who seek him. Let us not only focus on material things. The heroes of faith did not focus on material things, but they focused on the glory that was to come. Let us all focus on that glory. God bless you. Father, I want to thank you for this evening. 
And we thank you because you have spoken and you have spoken to us clearly. Father, I know there are those of us that are still seeking for earthly rewards from you. Father, I pray that you will cause us to be satisfied with what you have given us because we are pilgrims in this world. And Father, I pray that this evening you'll help us shift our mind to that eternal reward that you have promised to those that have given their lives to you. That crown that you shall give us, the crown of glory that the world cannot give, that only you give. We give you praise, our Father and our God, we honor you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over to you, my brother Addison. Ah, uh, thanks. Thanks so much, uh, Brother John. Thank you. Thank you. We have come to learn a lot. Myself, I thought I, I, I know, I knew much, but I actually learned so much that I, I almost knew nothing about faith. Thank you so much. We are so much blessed to have you in the house of the Lord. And we pray that the Almighty continue using you. And I don't know really how we can clap for you, but you deserve a loud hand clap. And then another uh, hand clap should go for the Lord. Thank you so much. Uh, brethren, <clears throat> uh, at this time, I understand that uh, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And in this statement, it shows that we underscore the necessity of faith in relating to God. Faith is not just a one aspect of a person's life. It is a, a foundational element that all of us must come to understand. Uh, and because of time, allow me, um, uh, we pray, we pray, let us pray. Uh, we need to also to understand, even in the hard times, uh, sometimes we realize, we don't realize that we are living in the hard times, especially nowadays, but even when things are hard, God cannot leave us. Let us pray. Uh, our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for helping us to make it, to make us through. And especially you have helped us to go through this season when we remember all the past days of COVID. Nowadays, there are so many issues. People are sick. People are going through a lot of things, a lot of issues around the world in this country in our church and elsewhere, in organizations, budgets, there is a lot of budget cuts every day. There is so much going on. It is really a difficult time, and sometimes our, us as, as Christians, we don't understand that we are living in a difficult time. But here we pray, and we believe with our faith that you will cut us through in all these uh, deep waters. And through the frames of the trials and through the pain of the hard losses that the, <clears throat> that the traders have had, that the farmers have had, that uh, this, uh, the people working in offices through the budget, cut, budget cuts have had, we are consistently aware of how much we need you and we need your grace, your strength, your power, working through even in these tough days. We know that, Lord, you have never left us. Help us to keep our focus fast on you, even in this difficult season. Please, oh God, forgive us. Forgive us and help us to put our attention to you, not on the things of the world. Help us to keep looking on one another as we pray for one another. Help us to reflect again and again on you, so that we can live by faith. We thank you, Lord, that you have come to help us to understand our weaknesses, how we don't believe, how we forget about you, how we don't look at even our own weaknesses as, as human beings. 
Father, forgive us. Help us to remember that the gift of Jesus Christ who died for us on the cross at Calvary, Jesus the Emmanuel is our greatest treasure. Fill us with your joy and the peace of your Holy Spirit. Direct our hearts and minds, our thoughts towards you, O oh Lord. Thank you for your reminder that both in sessions of the celebrations of all the seasons, in the brokenness, in the difficult times as we have shared, Lord, we know that you will never leave us. Thank you because your daily power is at work. We ask you today for your supernatural protection, oh God, both personally and globally. Please continue to send your angels and archangels to surround us, surround our homes, to us, surround our families, surround our, our places of work, surround our church, especially this church, All Saints, uh, Nakasero. We pray even as we we plan for all the upcoming functions, oh God, of consecration and to enter our new church. Father, we pray that your mighty hand will be seen on that day, that it is the power of the prayer. Without prayer, we are doing nothing. There is no foundation. Even when we build the buildings up to the sky without prayer, we know that there is no foundation. Yet Jesus Christ died for us and you gave us the foundation of faith. Thank you, Lord. We have prayed and believed in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.